Good morning. Well, it's not raining. <laughs> Humidity is up. I'd like to welcome you all here. Will you pray with me? Oh God, as we prepare to watch these boys walk across the stage to receive their certificate, we take a moment to thank you for keeping them safe through this pandemic and guiding them to this point. God, we ask that you allow this program to ex be exactly what you would like it to be. Also, we ask you to bless the boys with wisdom as they prepare for the next stage. Bless them that each will be pleasing in your sight. Then when that is accomplished, it will set each on their path of success. We ask this in your name. May we all say amen. And as a special moment for me, have an opportunity to recite Wilmer's prayer. My first years here at Gilman, she was here as one of our law school teachers. Wilmer's prayer. Boys, will you join me? As we come to school each day, let us not forget to pray to God who kept us through the night and woke us with morning light. Help us, Lord, to love thee more than we have ever loved before. And all we do and all we say to grow more loving every day. Thank you. You may be seated. Class of 2029, I have a confession to make. I am a sibling to five brothers, five. I want to take a moment to thank you for reminding me how fun and intellectually invigorating it was to share that space with them growing up. Lucky for me, this year, I have been able to share the lower school space with you. Like my brothers, you have shown yourselves to be intellectually invigorating, fun, curious, sweet, humorous, intelligent, warm, serious, charming, relentless, and unstoppable. This is what I learned this year about you. And yours is a space that anyone would be honored to share. So today, we honor you. Therefore, I would like to take a moment to thank the people who have helped you make it where you are today. Parents, caregivers, and families. Thank you for the love and support and encouragement you have given your children during their lower school years. A round of applause for all of you. Lower school and fifth grade teachers, thank you for your inspiration, expertise, energy, and devotion to these boys' growth and development this year. A round of applause. <laughs> uh, 
At every grade level, Gilman boys are known, loved, and challenged by this incredible group of educators. Our entire village has helped to raise you. A special thanks to the fifth grade teachers, Ms. Mays, Ms. Thomas, and Mr. Schloeder, as well as the co-curricular teachers for guiding this group of young men through a year that has tested all of us. We know that these boys are now solidly and distinctly ready to move on to middle school. Fifth graders, it was an honor getting to know you and watching you grow this year. It was a special year. Did you know that you were teachers as well? You taught me and all the new teachers what it means to be Gilman. You also were finally the oldest students and leaders in the building. Each of you stepped into your roles in your own way and made your own unique contributions to the grade and to the division. You have challenged and supported each other, had great laughs and fun times, made small and big mistakes and learned from them. And you developed a healthy confidence through hard work and perseverance. You survived Echo Hill and a whole year of early morning carpool safety patrol which, by the way, taught Ms. Testerman and I not to buy the child-sized vests anymore. We had to quickly get rid of those and invest in the adult vests by November because you grew so, so much so fast this year. You did so many things, just to name a few. You played football, soccer, water polo, and lacrosse. And you tried not to roll your eyes when I didn't know what cradling meant, or body checking, or slashing. You played the stock market, you played academic je jeopardy, and you read, and you read, and you read. You read books while sitting on windowsills, while curled up underneath desks, while laying across the top of three desks. Yes, somebody put three desks together like a bed, laid on top to read. You read in the hallways, curled up like cats, because the reader inside you told you it is a safe and comfortable space. You sang, you played musical instruments, and you danced. You drew, created, explored, and investigated. You flew rocket ships, and you tested hypotheses. You spoke and sang in no less than five languages. You presented in front of strangers, you ate lunch in the outside tent for more than half a year, even though it was colder than 32 degrees. And recently, you sang Sweet Caroline by Neil Diamond in the dining hall, and then Enemy by Imagine Dragons. You really do have a diverse range of tastes. And you buddied up with all your brothers in kindergarten and in the house teams. You showed the division what fine young men you are. Most importantly, you laughed and you learned. In short, you embodied what it means to be a Gilman boy, and you deserve your feelings of accomplishment for having completed all that you have with such grace and style. My wish for you as you forge your path in middle school is that you continue to develop your potential and continue to grow into courageous young learners who will set this world right and challenge others to join your righteous journey to a better humanity. And, and now I would like to um, announce families who have their last child going through the lower school. And families, when I call your son's name, if you wouldn't mind standing up and the gentlemen who are called will stand up as well. Nathaniel Bradley. Thomas Spicer. Ali Zahir. Kenzo Alexander.
Reese Bassard. Zachary Derman. Sahil Vesley. Benjamin Wyman. Max Zacharopoulos. And Gil Zerhuni. Gentlemen, please remember to visit us in parents. We will miss you, and we have cherished your time in the lower school. Next up is time for the class gift presentation. A long-standing Gilman tradition is the fifth grade class gift presentation, and today, Robert Randolph and Eamon Knapp will do the honor of making the announcement of the class gift. Gentlemen, if you two can come to the podium. Fifth grade traditionally presents the lower school with a class gift each year at the closing exercises. This gift is a, usually something that will help the entire lower school and it will be a part of the lower school for many years. This year's gift is something everyone will get to use when they are outside on the playground or on the blacktop. We are very happy to give the lower school an outdoor teak table for underneath the tree on the lower school blacktop. Each year we ask the fifth graders to tell us about their most memorable moment from their time in the lower school. So I'm gonna read 5A, most memorable moments. Lucas Bow. My most memorable moment was during Echo Hill. It was a zip line on a 15 meter tall tree that you would have to climb first. The tree had small patches to climb onto. I had a huge fear of heights, which made it even harder to climb. I made it to the top and now it was time for the zip line. An instructor at the top clips two carabiners to me, which were attached to the zip line. The end of a zip line was at the side of the tree. The zip line was a dead end. The only way down was with a ladder with Mr. James helping me. This was so memorable because I accomplished one of my top fears and went on a zip line. Nathaniel Bradley. My most meaningful moment at Gilman was when I first came here. I entered Prep 1 because I was at Grace Preschool through kindergarten. Everyone welcomed me like I had been here all along. I loved my teachers, Mrs. Maloney and Mrs. Matthews. The bunny Snickers was the softest bunny and was so nice to have in class. I can really relate to the idea that the Gilman community is like one big family. Cyrus Edelin. My most memorable moment at Gilman was the fifth grade water polo tournament because this was an enjoyable sport that I had never played before. During the tournament, there was a lot of shouting and splashing noises in the pool. Even though our class didn't win, we were still able to have a lot of fun. Two things I learned from this experience were that I'm a better swimmer than I thought I was, and that when you work together, you can make better things happen, such as scoring more goals. Alex Ekanayaka. My most memorable moment was Echo Hill when we went out into Mother Muck. My group was Carl, Felice, Cobb, Benjamin, John, Levi, and Gunner. The feeling when we first got in was not pleasant, and it was really, really cold. But at the end, in Mother Muck, all of us were just struggling for a really long time. It was a nice feeling to get into the bay and swim after Mother Muck. I'll never forget this experience. I didn't always like mud, but this experience showed me how fun it can actually be. Cullen Kielty. 
My most memorable moment at Gilman School so far has been Echo Hill. This was my most memorable moment at Gilman because it was my first sleepaway trip at school. This shaped me as a Gilman student because I could learn a little more about each person in the fifth grade. Caleb Kim. My most memorable moment in Gilman was Mr. Schloter's math class. I learned a lot from him and math was always something I looked forward to. We would play Jeopardy on Fridays and our class did NASCAR problems that were hard and challenging, but at the same time, fun and exciting. I always enjoyed math and learned something new every time. Most of all, Mr. Schloter himself was one of my very favorite teachers and I will always remember my time with him in fifth grade. Joshua Kim. My most memorable moment was in STEM club. We learned about lots of different technology and we got to code games and battle with robots. I learned a lot of coding and I got to use my skills to build a rocket and 3D print something. This stuck out to me because I like to use technology and we had a lot of freedom to design and use a wide variety of tools. Alex Maisline. My most memorable moment in fifth grade was when we were able to have recess with the middle and upper schoolers during a Triple the Spirit event. We made sandwiches for Mana House and played games with them. We also got ice cream. This was my favorite moment of the year. Felice Nestico. My most memorable moment in the lower school was Echo Hill. Echo Hill taught me to push my limits and to try new things, like the Swamp Walk. The Swamp Walk was so fun because I got to fall in the mud and hang out with my friends. At the end of it, we had to go into the Chesapeake Bay to clean off, and we started skipping rocks to see how far we could skip each one. The lower school was a lot of fun, but I can't wait for middle school. Isaac Ng. My most memorable moment was the Kindy 500. I remember when the teacher at carpool would try to cram the cardboard that we needed to make the car into my parents' car each afternoon. Then I remember trying to think of a cool car design. I decided on a tank because I thought it would be awesome. I remember getting there and waiting on the middle school blacktop, waiting for my turn to run the race. And then all of a sudden I saw my dad run at me and screaming, start running Isaac, start running. And then I began to run around the track. This is so important because it's one of my happiest moments at Gilman. Julian Oholsky. My most memorable moment was when we were able to create our 3D artifact for our fifth grade historical report. I loved tinkering with all the objects that were available on the app and seeing the printed objects that I created. I learned more about 3D printing as well as different apps and softwares that are available for 3D printing. It was a lot of fun. Jackson Payne. My most memorable moment was the swamp walk at Echo Hill. It was mother muck that made it special because I belly flopped into the mud. When I belly flopped into the mud, I didn't close my eyes. So I was blinded by mud for a few minutes, but then eventually I could see again. I was cleaning mud out of my ears for weeks. I learned that getting dirty can be really fun. Robert Randolph. One of my most meaningful experience as, at Gilman Lower School was the first week of being a student here when I had to walk into opening converse, convocation with senior Matthew Tomaselli. I remember that Mrs. M was instructing me to walk right next to Matt, but I didn't want to, which was definitely not the right choice. Matthew taught me many things that are useful in life and here at Gilman. He taught me never to be afraid when doing something important. He also taught me that Gilman is the school that I love the most. I want to give a big thanks to Matthew Tomaselli. Matthew Schneider. My most memorable moment was the swamp walk at Echo Hill. The swamp walk taught me to be okay with being uncomfortable because the water was cold and dirty. Swamp walk also taught me that after being uncomfortable, there's usually a, a reward. In our case, we got to go swimming at the beach. Colin Void. My most memorable moment was Echo Hill because I got to meet and bond with people I never thought I'd be friends with before. I also tried new things like walking in a swamp and climbing a tree. This taught me to give everybody and everything a chance 
because I became friends with people I never thought I would. Joseph Yu. The most meaningful experience I had at Gilman was the first recess when I started here. One of my future friends invited me to play with him and some other people, and I accepted, since I didn't really have any friends here at Gilman yet. That moment made it easier to make other friends, and that is so meaningful to me. Good morning. 5B, Alex Bergen. My most memorable experience at Gilman was the beginning of COVID. I learned to be more independent during this time because I had to stay on top of my assignments. I would spend hours at my desk doing my work. That time at the end of third grade was one of the factors that led to feeling more independent. Jad Biden. My most memorable moment in my seven years in the Gilman Lower School was our fifth grade math class with Mr. Schloter. My favorite activity in class was the whiz and hammer business. Mr. Schloter made sure to engage every single student he taught. He helped me learn that there are many different ways to attack a problem. Andrew Simon. My most memorable moment is about Mr. Lehman. He always told us stories about his life that were funny, but also had valuable lessons in them. He also was very kind to everyone that he met. And I don't know one person that didn't like his class. He would sometimes bring me little things like chocolates and wooden airplane models. Knowing him has helped me to try to be more kind to people. <laughs> Carl Follen. My most memorable moments were house meetings with my little buddy. He's so fun to hang out with, and whenever he sees me, he hugs me. This makes me think back to my big buddy when I was in pre-first. He was always so cool. This has helped me to see the importance of being a good role model. When my little buddy talks, it's memorable. When he hugs me, it's memorable. My little buddy, Clee, is the best. Levi Gorston. My most memorable moments were when I did my solo in the spring concert and Echo Hill. For my solo, I learned to over overcome my stage fright. At Echo Hill, I learned many useful skills and that being homesick leads nowhere. Both events taught me that you should always try to have fun. Andrew Herman. My most memorable experience at Gilman was the fifth grade water polo tournament. Every time we scored, our team would go crazy. We all shared that excitement, that same excitement. I created bonds with my classmates that I've never had before. Nicholas Heron. My most memorable moment of being in the lower school was being in Mr. Schloter's math class. It wasn't like a normal math class. We would play Jeopardy every once in a while. His math class was engaging and fun. This shaped me as a person because in his class, he would teach us more than just math, things that could help us solve other problems. Eamon Knapp. My memorable moment was competing in the Battle of the Books. I became more trusting and able to work in teams, and I learned that we could accomplish what we could accomplish if we worked together. Nathan Koldobsky. My memorable moment was an assignment that impacted my life. It was a persuasive essay. It was a long assignment, but I tried my best to finish it early. Doing that helped me realize how great it is whenever you finish a long assignment early. Working hard and fast might be tiring, but the time you get after working hard is great. You're not worried about finishing the assignment before the due date because you've already finished it. Miles Lewis. My most mem meaningful experience at Gilman was the African American leadership piece in fourth grade. It taught me how to research and take notes. I enjoyed the writing process and creating my visual aid. This helped me when it came time for my historical perspectives report in fifth grade. Now I know I am prepared for future research reports. Ben McWilliams. My most memorable moment at Gilman was going to Echo Hill because it made me learn about people. I wasn't very good friends with people before the trip and I got to know them. 
It helped me realize that you can make a friend out of everyone if you try. It also made me realize that everyone has a bit more to them than you think. John Nera. My most memorable moment was when I started playing soccer at recess. I will admit, I wasn't very good, but over time, I got a little better. Through this, I learned that trying something new isn't always a bad thing. You might even surprise yourself. Ace Noah Key. My memorable moments have been in math class with Mr. Schloter. Mr. Schloter makes math fun, exciting, and makes you think. My two favorite games we play are Jeopardy and Amazons. This class has made me realize how interesting math is. Charlie Rosenberg. My most memorable moments are from all of the special events that we had in fifth grade. There were some competitive ones and some fun ones, from band to our Echo Hill trip to concerts and water polo. They were all memorable and taught me to work as a team. Thomas Speicher. I think my most memorable moment was in second grade science when we launched our rockets. We were given materials and allowed to make it however we wanted. We got to test them and make corrections. Mine went two feet backwards at first. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. This taught me to be creative and resourceful. Ulysses Wojtowicz. My most memorable moment in fifth grade was working on the historical perspectives report. It was a difficult assignment that taught me about the Battle of Yorktown. I am proud of completing it because it showed me that I can do more than I thought I could. Winston Yang. My most memorable moment in the lower school was on the first day of kindergarten. I was very nervous when I walked in, but the teachers made me feel welcome. I was wondering about what the kids would think of me, but I fit in perfectly and made a lot of friends. This experience was important because it made me feel a lot more confident and comfortable throughout the rest of my years in the lower school. Ali Zahir. My most memorable experience in the Gilman Lower School was at Echo Hill. Three of us worked together to make our own island just off the beach. We dug a canal which separated us from the rest of the camp. I learned a lot while at Echo Hill, especially that teamwork makes the dream work. Five C. Kenzo Alexander. My most memorable moment was meeting Mr. Schloter. Mr. Schloter is like no other teacher I have met. He's a man, so he can understand a boy. He doesn't overreact to little situations. It is almost like he understands how we do things and why we do them, because I feel like he's already done what we're going to do. <laughs> Nate Bach. My most memorable moment was Immigration Day. This moment was special to me because it was my very first big project in the Gilman Lower School. Another reason that it was so memorable is because my mom was there when I was being asked questions. Benjamin Burns. My most memorable moment was the first project I did at Gilman. I had just moved from Michigan and I was very shy. I knew no one, none of my peers, and I was very nervous. It was then that my buddy, who had a few days earlier sent me a gift box with pictures of all the teachers and students, said hello. It was just one word, but the words reassured me and that school wasn't all that bad. Then, about a week later, I was paired up with someone I didn't know very well yet. Although I don't remember if it was the tornado project or a different one, my group showed me where things were and how to do things and the different places around the room. By the time the project was over, I was used to the school and all my new acquaintances. The project was over, but the kindness they showed, showed me still lingered in my heart, and it still does. Reese Boussard. My most memorable moment was my kindergarten teacher, Miss Brown. She gave me a stuffed animal. It was because I really liked that kind of animal at the time, and it had shown me that teachers can be your friends and that you can trust them. I still remember it, and it makes me happy to think that teachers are someone you can talk to. Zach Derman. My most memorable moment was Immigration Day. 
Immigration Day really taught me how people came to America. It also showed me that the system that the ship had was unfair and that the rich, higher class people got better of everything. It also showed me people can come to America to be free. Also, the teachers taught it in a fun way. Minoli Frangakis. My most memorable moment is not one but many. As far as Mr. Schloter provides the best education you can find with aggressiveness and excitement, many times he gives us a break from work. Poor Mr. Schloter created multiple Jeopardy games for us whenever he thinks we deserve a break from working or if we're ahead in our work. When we play Jeopardy, it's better than the real game. He has so much enthusiasm and hum humor put into the game to make it the best for us. It is fun. Many times there is screaming when a team gets a triple, triple stumper. They all start cheering. It is great. Gunner, gone. My most memorable moment is the day we played 5A in water polo because it was a lot of fun to finally play the tournament with the other classes and my friends. I also like, to got, I also like that I got to play goalie in the game and got to a few saves and assists. Tyshawn Lawson. My most memorable moment was my first day at Gilman. I was so nervous to meet so many new people, but I was happy. I met a student named Andrew Simon, and to this day, we have been friends. Kellen Matai. On my first day of school at Gilman, this year, a student came out to me as I was walking in the door and introduced himself and shook my hand. His name was Nate Bach. He made me feel welcome in a new classroom full of strangers. The one act of kindness impacted my year at Gilman a lot, because from there on, I felt like I was welcome. Coulter McPhail. My most memorable moment was in third grade when I got 100 on my math test. The reason I chose this was because it was the first 100 on a test I had ever gotten. Later that day, at the beginning of dismissal, I was given a Jolly Rancher. <laughs> this was my most memorable moment because that day I learned that hard work pays off. And you should always try to do your best because you might get a Jolly Rancher. <laughs> Tajo Overdoon. My most meaningful experience I have ever had at Gilman was when we went to the BSO for a field trip. This was very important to me because it was the first play I had ever seen. Also, it included music and inspired me to think about music and the way it is interpreted and used in the modern world. It was a very memorable experience because I play the piano and it showed me what you can do with that in the world. Victor Shi. My most memorable moment in which I have is when the woodwind band instructor, Ms. Kinkaba, taught us the name of the musical music intervals. This encouraged me to explore the intervals on the piano at home, which in turn made me want to be much better on the piano. After excelling at a piano, I wanted to become better at school, my main priority too. That was how I became a better student. Sahel Vesely. My most memorable moment was when we were in second grade, science with Mrs. James, and we launched paper rockets. It was so nice to see the rockets soar over the fields. Also, Mr. James helped me whenever I needed him and always suggested ideas that would help me out. Finally, the science class inspired me to work harder in everything, and I did because I would do it well in it. Ben Weinman. The first grade presidential parade is my most memorable moment because it helped me learn to speak in front of a crowd without throwing up. It was also my most memorable moment because my brother told me there was no way I was going to get George Washington, and I did. My brother's still smarting over that. Max Zacharopoulos. My most memorable experience in the lower school was Mr. Schloter's homeroom because we got to play Jeopardy and the NASCAR unit. These things were memorable because it was fun watching the whole class having fun while playing these games. Gil Zerhouni. My most memorable moment it was at the Wax Museum because I did my favorite celebrity in third grade in the options of celebrities, Elton John. My presentation was like the Colonial America Trifold presentation. The only difference was that I was wearing a wig and a rainbow boa where all the students, not just the parents, were allowed. And so now the treble tees will come down and sing thanks and praise.
Thanks to the treble tees. And so, guys, as you're as you're heading back to your seats, um, apparently you've been you've been given the heads up that I might give you permission to take off your jackets if it's warm out. And and uh, even though the clouds just came back in, um, permission granted. So if you're feeling a little warm, feel free to take off your jackets for a minute here. And and just keep in mind that when we do the certificates, you'll need to put them back on. But give yourselves a break right now, okay? So I want to offer my own welcome to everybody um, for being here this morning. It's really great to have you here. Um, everybody on stage, Mr. Lawson, fifth grade team, Ms. Testerman, Mr. Foreman. Mr. Foreman, our, our invocations and benedictions aren't going to be the same without your voice. Um, so thank you for all the years of, of your presence and your voice and your wisdom. And then a special thanks as well to Ms. Fassell, who, is, who has made it through her first year in Gilman's Lower School. Thank you. Yes, a well-deserved, well-earned round of applause. It's been a, an honor to work with you, and we're so glad that you're with us. Thank you. And then I know that you've said the same thing, but mostly over that way to the lower school faculty as well, a, a thanks for everything that you've done to support the boys throughout their time in the lower school. <laughs> There's, there's so much material in those reflections. I've listened to them for a dozen years now, and, and you could probably see me frantically scribbling stuff down because there's just so much good, goodness in there and so many great things to react to. And just a couple of comments. First of all, I miss Snickers. I'd forgotten about Snickers, the bunny rabbit. I'm so, Mr. Bradley, was that you who brought it up? It was so great to remember Snickers. And really interestingly, Robert, mentioned Matthew Tomaselli, who was actually back. Guys, you'll be interested to know this. Matthew Tomaselli was back for his fifth year reunion just about a month ago here on campus. And we had a nice visit, Robert. He's doing great. He lives in New York now. And part of what's really neat about working in a, a pre-K to 12 school is that I, all of us who work here get to see you grow right? from kindergartners to fifth graders to eighth graders to seniors and then when you come back to visit as young adults it is it's really neat and really satisfying so Robert know that Matthew is doing very well and I'm sure that he was really his ears are burning right now because of your nice words about him and then finally it's hard it's hard not to cl close reflections about the the fifth grade reflections without mentioning Echo Hill it clearly got a lot of airtime and particularly mud I actually spent a night out at Echo Hill this year, and that was a real treat for me, guys. I hadn't been to Echo Hill in several years, and so it was really nice to spend a night in a cabin. It wasn't a sleepful night um, but in a tent, actually, but very worthwhile. Um, and I somehow missed the mud part, so I'll have to go back, I guess, next year. So it's a, it's a tradition at this ceremony Today, the, the fifth grade closing exercise or lower school closing exercises, and then tomorrow we have our middle school closing exercises where the eighth graders graduate from the middle school, and then on Saturday morning we'll have our Founders Day graduation ceremony. And in all three of these ceremonies, as appropriate, depending on the, the recipients, it's a good moment for us to recognize some faculty and staff for their awards and certain milestones and also awards that we give out every year. And so now's the time for me to do that with some lower school teachers so that we can all acknowledge them. And we start, and this will be a pretty neat one, fellas, we start by commemorating milestones of service to Gilman. And there's one special one that we get to do this year for the lower school, and that's to recognize 30 years of service to Gilman. So I'm going to ask him please to come up to receive a plate and be recognized for 30 years of service, Mr. Anthony Wayne Jordan. Guys, this is Coach Jordan, better known to y'all. Coach Jordan, please come forward.
Earlier this year in the spring, we presented at a, a faculty gathering, a faculty breakfast that we do every year, we presented the Broadus Hubbard Award, which is an endowed fund to sponsor professional development or travel, usually in the summer. And it was established through a gift by Mr. and Mrs. Thomas H. Broadus Jr. and Mr. and Mrs. A.C. Hubbard Jr. And this endowment allows a Gilman faculty member every summer and family um, when appropriate to go on a, a trip of their design and it's a really special award and just wanted we've presented it already but wanted to acknowledge and ask <laughs> sorry Miss Catherine Katie Thomas to come forward to receive recognition few more. In September of 1998, Mr. and Mrs. Stephen T. Scott established the Gilman Advisor Award. And this award, in addition to providing funds for professional development, is given to that member of the faculty, and we do this in each division, who excels okay. I'm going to pause for just a second. Thanks.
Can we remind everyone to get up and get some water at the station? Yeah. And water's coming through the place. So it looks like people are, are doing this already, but, but please feel free to get water um, if, if need be or at any point, too. Just get up and, and grab some if you need it. So let me give a, a quick update. Um, everything, you know, Edie Meacham came down um, pretty quickly. Everything seems to be okay. Um, and the golf cart, Darnell and Sean um, were taking her up to shade up by House A, and the paramedics were coming in that way. But every, she actually didn't want to go up to see the paramedics, but we thought that was probably the right thing to do. So, guys, everything's going to be fine. Um, and uh, the ambulance was on the way um, to make sure that everything, that everything was okay, that checked out all right. Um, and we got better, more shade up that way for, for everybody to sit in while, while that's taking place, okay? So thanks for everybody's responsiveness, and I appreciate the, the cooperation and the respect that we gave that moment. Me, yes, sir. You know, guys, a lot of you also in your reflections about Echo Hill talked about the importance of people right? and, and good people around you. And I think a moment like this serves as a really good reminder of, of how we have really good people around us to help out. So um, keep, keep that with you always, all right? I'm going to keep going with some faculty awards, and then we'll get to the presentation of the certificates. So the Scott Award is given to a member of the faculty who excels in the area of counseling and advising. And this year, it's a pleasure to present the Scott Award to an outstanding lower school faculty member, Kate Schmick. Ms. Schmick. The Edward K. Dunn Faculty Award was established by the family of Edward K. Dunn, class of 1918, and a member of the Board of Trustees for 54 years. He was a loyal and devoted alumnus of Gilman, and he was the first alum to serve as the president of the board. And this award is given to members of the Gilman faculty in each division who made exceptional contribution to the development of character of students. And this year, it's an honor to present the Dunn Award to Ms. Karen Cooper. Ms. Cooper. Thanks, Dad. The next couple awards are, are school-wide, and this year they're being awarded to lower school teachers. The first is the Dawson L. Farber Jr. Award, and it's presented to the faculty member who is considered to have been the most helpful to his fellow teachers. And we are pleased to present the Farber Award this year to Mr. Barry James. Mr. James.
And then finally, the class of 1947 Fund for Meritorious Teaching was established in 1986 to encourage excellence in teaching. Recipients of the award are selected for teaching excellence and inspirational influence on students. And this year, it is a pleasure to award the, 19, the class of 1947 Meritorious Teaching Award to Ms. Sarah Hegan. Ms. Hegan. So congratulations to all those award winners, and, and again, thanks to all of our faculty for your commitment and dedication to the boys as they're making their way through Gilman. All right, so guys, we're almost there, time, almost time for the presentation of the certificates, and I just want to offer a couple of words, because I've been opening doors for y'all for a long time now in the mornings, and it's been a real pleasure. So one of the things that I like to do is, is look back to look ahead, and, and I, as I do so, I'm going to ask you to do the same thing, and I'm going to recognize, I think all of us, it's, it's very apparent, two things have grown a lot since you were in kindergarten. Whether you're in kindergarten at Gilman, whenever you start Gilman, or you started in fifth grade, think back to when you were in kindergarten, when you were first starting out at school, and two things have really grown. First of all, you have grown. You've grown a lot physically, intellectually, emotionally, socially. You have grown. And I was reminded of this. I actually had a conversation. I met with Ms. Hudson a, few, a couple of weeks ago in her classroom, in her kindergarten classroom, and we sat down to chat. And when we did so, my knees hit my chin. <laughs> those chairs, I don't know the last time you've been in a kindergarten classroom, but those chairs are teeny. Right? You probably have the same experience that I did. So you've grown a lot in so many ways not just physically, but, but think about the ways that you've, you've learned how to read. You didn't know how to, many of you didn't know how to read when you were in kindergarten. Right? You've made friends. Right? You, you talked about all the STEM work that you've been involved in, the math projects. So you've grown as students. And then the second thing that's grown tremendously is your world. Right? So back in kindergarten, your world was pretty much the kindergarten classroom and then a playground. Now you've made your way over to the arena. You've made your way out to Echo Hill, to Jamestown. Your world is expanding. So as we think about those two things that have grown, I'd ask you as you move forward, I think we all would encourage you as you move forward from fifth grade, wherever your path takes you, as you move forward from fifth grade, continue to grow, continue to be your best self, which is something we ask you to do often here. We ask that often that you grow, that you continue, you strive to be your best self, right? Try new things, practice old things, strive to improve. And then with respect to your expanding world, be your best self that, so that you make the world the best version of itself. Remember that you're not in this alone. Back to that, that, that idea of, of acknowledging others around you. And a couple of you in your remarks, and, and Benjamin, you mentioned it, the, the importance of a hello. Right? Say hey to each other. You hear me say that a lot too. Say hey to each other because it's the acknowledgement. It's friendly, first of all, but it's the acknowledgement of somebody else in your space. Right? So be good to each other. Say hey, be first class citizens. Right? Practice the Gilman Five. When you do those things in an effort to be your best self, you're going to make the world the best version of itself. Can you do that? Fantastic. Thanks, guys. All right, so now here's the moment you've all been waiting for, and I know everybody else here has been waiting for the presentation of the certificates. And I'm going to ask Ms. Fassell, Ms. Testerman to come forward, the fifth grade team, and we'll get rolling.
Alfonso Andre Alexander. Nathaniel Francis Bach. Lucas Bell. Nathaniel James Bradley. Alexander Frost Bergen. Benjamin Francis Burns. Reese Andrews Bussard. Jad Ali Biden. Andrew Leonard Simon. Zachary Leo Derman. Cyrus Painan Edlin. Alexander Navier Ekonayaka. Carl David Foland. Emmanuel Constantine Arsenios Frangakis. Gunner Vaith Gan. Levi Samuel Gorston. Andrew J. Herman. Nicholas Gregory Heron. Cullen James Keelty. Caleb Kim. Joshua Kim. Eamon Thomas Knapp. (laughs) 
Nathan Michael Koldobsky. Tyshawn Alexander Benjamin Lawson. Miles Curtis Lewis. Kellen Patrick Matai. Coulter Curtis McPhail. Benjamin Lachlan McWilliams. Alexander Marconi Maisline. John Basant Singh Nera. Felice Joseph Nestico. Isaac Vincent Long Yu Ng. Julian Joseph Ohalski. Thaddeus Kai Overduin. Jackson Chase Payne. Ace Noah, Tennessee Key. Robert Whitridge Randolph. Charles James Rosenberg. Matthew Jin Schneider. Victor Zongyu Shi. Thomas Matthew Speicher. Benjamin Sander Trossman. Sahil Aaron Vesley. Colin Alexander Void. Benjamin Avery Weinman. Yes, 
Ulysses Joseph Wojtowicz. Winston Yang. Joseph H. Yu. Maxwell Thomas Zacharopoulos. Ali Zahir. Gil Halim Kalon Zerhuni. I present to everybody the class of 2029. Congratulations, gentlemen. Gentlemen, congratulations. Please be seated. And now, Mr. Armand Lawson. Good morning. Being here this morning and uh, certainly standing here in front of you all. I'm reminded of how much I enjoyed being in the lower school. <laughs> and one of the lessons that I want to emphasize today is a lesson that I learned here in lower school. We were together during the fall of 2020, a very pivotal time in education and certainly in my own professional career. But the thing that I learned from the middle school, and it came in different forms, it came from teachers, it came from students, it came from parents, is the importance of joy and gratitude. And even being here this morning, hearing the reflections and hearing some of the names being called, all that joy has been rekindled in my heart. And so, since I have the opportunity and I have a captive audience in a time where anger and hate seems to permeate our world, I want to emphasize the lesson that you all taught me and modeled for me during a difficult time. Never underestimate the power of joy and gratitude. And so I thank you all for that. This morning, I can't, I can't not think about that. Class of 2029, when I came to the lower school, you were second graders and you were pretty small. Since then, you're a little taller, a little smarter, more independent, and now you're ready for middle school. And as Mr. Smythe mentioned, when I was hearing the reflections of the year, there was a lot of material there, and certainly some uh, analogies you can make to the middle school experience. And so I would remind you all, as you were thinking about your time in lower school, and many of those reflections specifically about Echo Hill, the importance of taking challenges, trying new things, being comfortable with discomfort. And it's interesting because uh, someone mentioned Jolly Ranchers. I think actually there's sometimes Jolly Ranchers in middle school as well. So there may be some, some payoff there. It's a good lesson to keep with you. 
But the one thing that I, I really liked, and you know, certainly there are lots of analogies I could go with, but the idea of belly flopping into the, uh, the swamp. And I think the uh, you know, middle school, there'll be lots of challenges, lots of new things, lots of experiences that you may not be exactly comfortable with. But I encourage you to take that same spirit with you and just belly flop in. And know that what you put into it will be what you get out of it. And there will be people all around you in the middle school who will be joining in and celebrating with you, cleaning the mud out of your eyes, cleaning the mud out of your ears, to make sure that you are feeling good about that experience. And so, because I actually know you all, I am very excited for you all to be coming to the middle school. And I'm happy to be the first person to welcome you to the middle school. Welcome, Class 2029. So before we end with the benediction and the recessional, um, there are the last two awards to give out to two students. The Lillian Alpert Community Service Award and the John Lehman Unsung Hero Award. In honor of Ms. Alpert's years of service to Gilman students and in recognition of her commitment to serve others, the Lillian Alpert Community Service Award is given to a grade five student who best demonstrates service to others at Gilman and in the broader community. The recipient shows this commitment daily in ways small and great without expectation or reward or recognition. This year, the award goes to Benjamin Burns. Benjamin, can you stand up and be acknowledged, please? Thank you. In honor of Mr. Lehman's years of devotion to Gilman students and in recognition of his selfless service to others, the John Lehman Unsung Hero Award is given to a grade five student who sets a strong example of selflessness without attention or celebration. The recipient is selected each year by an anonymous poll of all grade five students. This year, the award goes to Eamon Knapp. Eamon, can you stand up to be recognized? Congratulations, Eamon. We would like to thank all students, parents, guardians, and our hardworking, committed staff who have made this year at Gilman such a rewarding time. To our fifth grade students, as you head to middle school, you know that you have contributed significantly to our division. You made your mark and will always be a cherished part of the lower school family. To the members of our community who are moving on, best wishes in your new communities. And we hope that you will never forget your time at Gilman. We would like to take this opportunity to thank and share an appreciation for the following staff who will be moving on in September. Mr. Andrew Holt, Ms. Ashley Dagenet, and Ms. Laura Couch. Thank you for your incredible time and service to Gilman. We wish you the utmost success as you move through to the next stage of your life's journey, and we thank you. We all hope you have fond memories of your lower school years. They have been not rich in traditions, people and experiences, stories and laughs that have helped shape the dynamic, wonderful class that you are today. We are proud of you for the fantastic work you've done in the lower school. Congratulations, class of 2029. Hey, the sun came out. <laughs> Gets a little warm up here, but I can imagine on that turf. Spent a lot of years out there and reflections. And Mr. Smythe said, hearing my voice, I hope it was my personality that helped out a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> As the students were coming across the stage, a flash of memories went as well. Both my sons uh, came across the stage as well auditorium out here and I just saw them coming as across the stage 37 years I spent here at Gilman School has been great on this field as well because this is one of the first fields I had an opportunity to be here so to all of the graduates I, 
I say congratulations and good luck in middle school. There was years ago, that's where I started. I was the middle school seventh grade science teacher. And you can clap. <laughs> <laughs> to my colleagues in the law school, some of you I won't see again. Thank you for allowing me to be a part of your life as well. Some we began together. Nick Chaloda, I coached you. And uh, Tony Jordan, 30 years, my God. We spent a lot of time together, my man. Now for the benediction. Would you mind standing, please? Will you pray with me? God, we thank you for the blessings of this program and allowing these boys to make it to this particular point. We give you the glory, the success thus far as we ask to continue the blessings as they prosper to their next chapter. Grant them the success both ac academically and in their life. Bless the families that have the opportunities to witness their success in these past years. Now, as we prepare to leave this place, allow each of us to reach our separate destination safe and sound. And for these blessings we ask in your name, amen.